there we go. And I'm just gonna continue. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lindsay Roth. I am the community manager over at Thank You um, and also the assistant vice chancellor for annual giving at UMass Dartmouth. I've been using this product for quite some time and really enjoy it. And I'm so glad that we're going to be diving into the events um, area of using this product because it's actually a place where I've had some success personally, um, but also where there's just a lot of potential uh, to be really creative and, and to cut through the clutter. Those of you who don't know, um, we have a Facebook partner community group with over 400 members at this point, um, all current Thank You community uh, clients. And they're sharing ideas every day. Um, I really like the examples that have been posted recently. They're really versatile in nature and definitely can serve as a really nice inspiration point, but also a supportive community where you can ask questions and get some answers and, and tips from um, people who are already exploring maybe the area that you're looking to branch out in when it comes to video. Um, so all you have to do is type in Thank You Partner Community in the search bar and then ask to join our Thank You Partner Community group and we'll make sure that you're um, approved in and in. And also uh, go to medium.com forward slash thank you and follow our blog, send and receive for case studies, different success stories, um, examples and more. It's really a, a great resource, especially if you're new to the platform, um, because there's quite a bit of content up there that you can search through. Um, and if you have an example to share or are looking for specific examples that I can point you to, just feel free to email me. Um, I'll share my email at the end of this so that you can uh, connect with me beyond this webinar. So we're just going to run through some video impact on messaging um, in general so that if you are coming from an uh, institution of naysayers when it comes to using creative methods of uh, RSVP, uh, collecting RSVPs for events and inviting people to events, we can help with that, um, but also focus on the types of events that might be fit for a video. So. Um, uh, invitation, um, but also what audiences you can feel free to focus on. And then we'll really move into campaign examples, which is the meat of this and where I think a lot of inspiration will come from. So for those of you who don't, um, aren't familiar um, with latest stats around mobile and social adoption by generation, I like to focus on this because basically what we have here is, you know, a very connected society. And I think that people tend to assume that the younger generation are overwhelmingly dominating the mobile and social adoption. And that is very true. And you can see that um, in the green and But overall, and this is where we involve Gen Z, Team Plus is essentially um, really dominating, especially in the smart smartphone category. But you know, almost eighty percent of the population has a smartphone, um, and especially with your baby boomers in silence, you know, you're seeing them having tablets and being active on social media as well. And so, really, you have to ask yourself, not necessarily. Um, who should be receiving video because I think everyone is fit to be seen to be receiving video and if you're not um, incorporating video into generations maybe ask why um, because especially the older generation is much more connected than they were even five years ago and so it might be a missed opportunity to cut them out of the the um, message um, being delivered in that way and that's not to say that you can't focus on the tried and true methods of paper um, uh, invitations or um, uh, promotion, but I just think that you can lean into other options and see how it's responded to so that you can start to build the baseline for your institution and your audiences. Cisco predicts that 82% of all internet traffic will be video by 2021. And while a lot of this will likely be dominated with streaming, I just think it speaks to the visual nature that our society is going towards. 
it's almost like we're going back in time and communicating more with hieroglyphics with emojis and now with um, video over copy. Um, millennials specifically are more uh, likely to watch video on a mobile device by 150%. So that's a huge stat. Um, and so anything that you can do to promote um, that a video is inside the message by using a platform like ThankView or including uh, the word video in your subject line will help increase the likelihood that they're going to actually watch your message. Um, millennials and Gen X love animation, so if you have those kind of resources at your disposal, it may be worth it to think about a way that that could be incorporated into your approach, but really at the end of the day, the content should feel genuine and not highly produced because they're able to really poke holes, I think, at this point, a lot of people can tell when they're trying to be sold something and can really um, sniff out um, any ulterior motives if they're not completely front and center. And that's where I think leaning into platforms like Thank You can really help because you can shoot content on your iPhone and then package it really nicely so that it's sort of the best of both worlds where it's nicely branded, it's marketed well, but the video that they're watching feels um, really natural and it doesn't feel highly or overly produced. Um, again, Gen X love educational videos. So if you have any kind of special lectures or um, programs that are around furthering their knowledge or education, I think that that's something you can um, definitely tap into promoting with video. Um, and then your boomers are more active on tablets, laptops, and desktops, but they are just as engaged um, as Gen X and are creeping up on the stats with millennials. At the end of the day, you know, there really isn't a big variance between these groups anymore because our, our society has leaned so much into technology that the average audience member um, is pretty connected and savvy. So let's talk a little bit about how video can enhance your event specifically. First of all, video invitations are easier to send and track and convert. And when you use a platform like Thank You, you can really um, you know, personalize the message along the way as well. They also can add a face-to-face -face, um, element to your event. And so if you have a committee, if you have a board, if you have program that features a speaker or performance, um, both your lead up and invitations and your post event stewardship can tie this in with video. Um, and then also this content that's created can be repurposed on social media, whether it's promotion in the lead up of the event, stewardship after the event, or both. And we can talk a little bit about the way and pro process to do that um, as uh, we go on in this presentation. As always, Thank You makes it really easy to use video as you see fit and Ultimately, if you are struggling with a way to adapt an idea that you have, I'm happy to chat through and brainstorm a way that we can make it work for you and your event. So the types of events that I think can really benefit, first of all, I would argue probably every single event you can find a way to incorporate video, but if we're thinking broad strokes here, your annual marquee events, your award ceremonies or homecoming reunion events are great. I really would encourage you to lean into any kind of planning committees, especially if they're board members, where you could use the video retrieval feature, send them a link to record a video encouraging their peers, classmates, um, fellow alumni to come back for the event and experience it with them um, because that adds a nice peer-to-peer -peer element without having to physically send them off with a list of people to contact. In addition, if you have an award ceremony or special guests at your homecoming or reunion, maybe featuring them in the form of doing a little promo clip about their accomplishments and while they're, why they're receiving this award and then sharing the details about the event. And I think that that's something that can be easily done with a video that's within a minute and a half constraints. Um, it also is a nice way to make your award recipients feel like VIPs, which they should feel like. And it's a nice way for you to get additional content that you can use to promote on social media about the event in general. Uh, alumni games. I think a peer-to-peer -peer message to pressure former athletes to play or show up to cheer is always good, but also it would be really nice if you could do a recap of how the games were, interviewing some of the former student athletes as players, um, and just get their perspective, and we'll actually have a nice example of that um, shortly. 
In addition, um, special lectures, you can record an invitation from the guest of honor and invite them to come and hear them speak. Uh, you can also feature clips from the speaker um, themselves and share it after the event to keep the discussion uh, going and, and remind them of the benefits uh, that they had access to. And then also I think your, your scholarship meet and greets are really great for this and have the beneficiaries of the scholarship do the inviting. And you can even arrange for them to connect with their student before the event so that um, they have as much time as possible to get to know their student. And, um, and then that way when they meet at the lunch, they'll already have a sense of each other and there isn't that awkward, you know, initial meetup. When you're looking to what type of audiences to focus on, I always push like your short time audiences like senior parents, they're leaving soon. So if you have any kind of special receptions that are tailored right to them or the families of graduates, maybe consider a before or after commencement video from leadership. And that can be a before inviting them to a special toast ceremony or to view the options of senior week activities that are geared towards the family involvement as they start to come in from out of town for the big day. Um, but afterwards, you could even do a wrap up with maybe um, some of the speakers at commencement being featured in uh, uh, a recap video so that you can thank everyone for coming. And again, just express your gratitude and, and congratulatory message to the class of 2019. Uh, your alumni, Definitely invite them to homecoming with a rally from class reunion chairs or board membership. If you have any kind of competitions around giving, it's a great place to plug and um, remind people to make a gift, of course, in, in addition to registering. Um, but then if you have community members that aren't always um, on campus, but have the option to attend because events can be open to the general public, definitely get to know your neighbors by sharing the benefits of leaving your campus and making sure that they know what's coming up. Um, and that can be a simple update from a student or like I said, if it's a special lecture that's open to the public, um, consider recording a message from the um, featured presenter or um, a member of campus leadership encouraging them to learn more and register to attend. Um, again, when looking um, at audiences to focus on, I think that students are another untapped resource here. And this may not be something that your office specifically oversees because I realize that enrollment is more of an admissions thing. However, it's always nice to be the person at the table that has a tool that you can share. And Thank You is one of those tools that can really get more buy-in across campus if you just let people have access to it. Um, Imagine future students, instead of having orientation, you know, emails flood their inboxes, have a nice welcome message from an orientation leader um, with their specific cohort or just welcoming them on the first day of programming and letting them know how the day is going to look so that it's a little less anxiety provoking as they come to campus. Um, if you have prospective students that are being connected with an overnight student host, consider, you know, sending a video um, because that can simply just show a lot more than an email can say. Just giving a quick dorm tour of where they're going to be crashing and then preparing um, for what like the restrooms are going to look like and what they should prepare in their overnight bags so that they aren't um, uh, in a situation where they're missing it's something that they could provide like provide useful like flip-flops for the showers for example. Um, that's always um, a good a good reminder and I think that especially if you have a, a rock star student like a student host um, they probably could have a lot of fun doing a you know 30 to 45 second invitation or can't wait to meet you video that could easily go off. Um, in addition your scholarship donors invite them to an annual event with a video from their sponsored student and then volunteers um, I think using this uh, tool as a way to keep them in the know and easily share content that you want them to share on their social channels. So maybe instead of inviting them because they're already very closely involved, you could give a mass update about the event and just send a video because it's easier for you to rattle off all of the things that have happened instead of trying to formulate um, uh, an email. But you could also forward them a video and say in the message, 
of the text of the um, message say, hey, uh, I would love for you to just click share and tweet this and post it on Facebook so that um, we can continue to cross promote the event itself. Cam uh, campaigns on Thank You make it really easy, especially around events. So first of all, we have an events campaign so that you can track events specifically as a channel and um, a campaign type and see how your audience is responding to videos versus your actual event invitations that are going through maybe an HTML email client. Um, if you're having an event, use Thank You to boost RSVPs or follow up. And I think you know we'll see a lot of examples of ways that we can make the conversion that much smoother um, by incorporating video into the initial invitation. Um, I think a video request, um, something like with peer-to-peer -peer impact that can require um, light lifting on all sides. So just sending an email out to your board and asking them to do a simple pitch for uh, coming back to homecoming that you can then repurpose into multiple messages based on their affinities. So your board member from the class of 1980, maybe will send a group out to the 80s decade. Um, what, whereas your younger recent graduate that's on the board that graduated from the College of Business may send it out to recent grads from the College of Business. And so building the affinity list more around the person rather than focusing on everyone absolutely must get an email or, or a video message, instead letting the affinities kind of guide who's getting one instead. Um, and then replies, you know. I think you can ask your donors to reply with a message of why they gave for a chance to be featured in the event program. This would work really nicely with a scholarship luncheon and see if you can get some nice testimony from your donors. Again, like, you know, uh, technology and, and being comfortable using it is going to play a factor here, but it doesn't hurt to ask and some people may really surprise you because I've done this before and have gotten a um, definitely some duds, you know, they're not all winners, but I also think that I've gotten some really great clean footage that I could easily repurpose and it just saves me so much time than having to actually go out and seek that content and arrange for it to be recorded. We all hold computers and high res, you know, uh, image devices in our hands in the form of smartphones each and every day. And so thank you really allows you to lean into that in our society and let your volunteers and donors or event attendees kind of do the work for you in that way, which is nice. So let's dive into the meat of it with some video examples. First up is Fresno State Alumni Association. They hosted an alumni game for baseball players. Fighting's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. and uh, being able to come back here and, and uh, do our part with, with our you know, current players uh, and, and you know, hold the reputation of, of what alumni, Bulldog alumni is, is you know, that, that's, that's held high in our regards and, and it's something that uh, we take a lot of pride in. It was great to get out here, you know, it makes you, makes you feel like you're, you're still, you still got it, you still play a little bit and, and that's a lot of fun. So once you're a Bulldog, once you're in the family, uh, you, you never leave the, the community, you never leave the family. Coach Batesel, that, that's what it brings back to. I mean, great coach. I mean, testament. All these guys coming back and uh, showing up for the alumni game. It, it's fun. I mean, you get to catch up on what you haven't talked to in a year or two and uh, see what everybody's doing. Um, everybody took a different career path, and uh, it, it's good. And they got kids now and wives, so it, it's cool to see, and I enjoy it. To get a chance to go up and play in the big leagues uh, was a dream come true, and uh, – and to be honest, the highlight of my career was playing in Omaha. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that go on in, in becoming a Bulldog. And I think that uh, that's something that, that we, do, again, don't take lightly. So again, like, this was a pretty, um, a pretty straightforward interview style. You know that they didn't do a very highly produced um uh, video, but at the end of the day, it sent a really nice heartwarming message about what it was like to be back in 
um, their, their college uh, stadium playing with each other for the first time in years. And um, it also is something that can be used to promote future events in that way, um, but serves as a nice wrap up as well um, for the rest of the community to be aware of and also to steward them beyond the event itself. And what I personally loved is in the lineup, you can see the coach kind of really embracing some of the guys that have come back that he hasn't seen in a while. And that's really what, you know, bringing people back is all about. That's the engagement work that really shifts cultures and continues to deepen relationships with institutions. And so why not highlight that and let them, like I said, do the, do the selling for you instead. Um, and, you know, you could also see that it's, it's not that hard to feature people on film when um, a lot of the players that were featured went on to minor or major league success and probably have had some, a little bit of media training, which is nice. But at the end of the day, you know, even, um, even if you have like a D3 um, program, it still is littered with tons of passion that people are just waiting to, um, share and especially after a nice fun game like an alumni game over like a homecoming or reunion weekend. Um, I thought that this was a nice way that you could keep people updated past an event or in the lead up doing a little coach update of what it's like and this is again Fresno State giving an update about you know, this has been a really fun team to coach so old team and, and if you ask me what would be your one thing you'd love to say about your team going into a season, it would be they're old. Uh, you know, we're going to have six seniors returning that all have a ring and we're all starters. Uh, the other three starters are very likely to be juniors and old juniors. You know, Root is old, Corby plays old. Uh, this is probably going to be the oldest team that I've, maybe I've ever had. Uh, the league is, uh, you know, San Diego State's not going to be what they were last year. They're going to be really good and probably playing with a chip on their shoulder and the rest of the league at least on paper uh, should be much better so uh, trying to win at once is difficult trying to repeat and then repeat in a year when the rest of the league is going to be improved uh, we got our work cut out for us. so again this was just a simple coaches update but as you can imagine like as a uh... Um, a donor or a person who just came back, it would be nice to stay in touch with the coach and so that maybe then their next visit won't be as far off as their next reunion, but instead the next time that they're able to come back to watch the current team play. This is something that Yale put out um, in the lead up to their alumni. Hello, my name is Whaley Chang. I'm the executive director of the Yale Alumni Association. I'm here in a beautiful Sterling Library today to let you know how much Yale is looking forward to seeing you at your upcoming reunion weekend. Reunions are all about friends. You'll have an opportunity to connect with old and dear friends, but also the opportunity to meet new friends. Your reunion committee has been hard at work planning lots of activities and programs for you to enjoy. The Alumni Association has arranged dozens of tours and lectures. We have two new residential colleges, we have new science facilities, and have you ever been up close and personal with the Newberry organ in Woolsey Hall? And when was the last time you were at Payne Whitney Gymnasium? We cannot wait to give you a warm welcome back to Yale, back home. And again, there was a lot of content featured there that you could easily repurpose into additional messages that get sent out in the lead up to an, um, an alumni weekend. First and foremost, there was a singing group on campus. Um, so you could maybe feature them if they were gonna be playing at, a, at an event over the weekend. Um, she mentioned tours and lectures. So maybe a little bit of a sneak peek into um, a tour or new building on campus that alumni may have not seen since the last time they were on campus um, and what the purpose is so that they're sort of itching to, to learn more and sign up for the tours. Um, lectures, you know, doing either a rundown of who's going to be 
um, on campus lecturing um, or an invite from those professors or change makers that are going to be featured um, so that people just get excited about the programming that's ahead. And so you can do this not only to attract people to the event overall, but then also to find what their path is going and, and programming is going to look like because when you're at a place like Yale, I think that the um, the schedule can get very heavy with content and, and has a little bit of a build your own adventure aspect to it. I like this. Um, it was short and sweet from OU, but they open up their practice to. Um, Hello, I'm Lon Kruger, men's basketball coach. Uh, very happy to announce our relationship with the Alumni Association and hosting an all access to practice for Alumni Association members. Family, friends, hopefully you'll come out November 12th, Boyd Noble Center, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Meet the players, watch practice, uh, hang around afterwards, have a good time. Contact the Alumni Association to sign up. Hope to see you there November 12th. So instead of just um, an alumni game, which itself can be a little bit taxing to, to organize, um, this uh, um, OU opted to actually do an open practice where the guys were going to be practicing anyway um, and they earmarked some time for networking with alumni who wanted to come and meet the players, ask about what it's like to be a current member of the team, and then physically watch practice and also take part in it, which I think is a really nice way to sort of, you know, maybe take the pressure off if people don't want to physically participate in a game but would like to interact with the players. Um, and I thought the message was great, short, sweet, to the point, could do very well on social media as well. Um, this is actually um, an international example, but very applicable. Uh, Monty promoting their scholarship bench. Hi there, my name is Margaret O'Brien and I'm a Monty alumni from the class of 95. I'm thrilled to be a guest speaker at this year's Blue and Blue Scholarship Lunch that's being held on Friday the 13th of May at New South Wales Parliament House. Monty Alumni and Foundation are jointly putting on this event to raise funds for Monty's bursary program, which aims to support the education expenses of students in need. I'll be talking about my journey from Monty to creating literacy programs in Colombia, to co-founding Young Change Agents, which teaches young people how to use business principles to create positive social impact. Start organising your table and bring along your friends for what will be a wonderful event. I look forward to meeting you then, and the details of how to book are below. And so again, you know, very short, sweet to the point, but featuring somebody who was going to be um, speaking at the lunch, sharing her testimony as part of the program. And um, it's very peer-to-peer -peer in nature because she's also an alumna. And then this is, I thought, a really nice example of how you could wrap up a scholarship lunch, kind of interview style, sort of feels like a news, news wrap up, a little segment in a way that you could promote it. As well. I'm delighted to be here to welcome all of you to the stand owners this wonderful team. This is our 22nd annual scholarship luncheon here at UIS. Uh, we have uh, roughly 270 people coming. It's a pretty exciting day. For some of us, it's it's the most exciting day of the year on campus. And that opportunity for our donors and the student recipients of those scholarships that those donors put forth, a uh, chance to get together, get to know each other. And uh, we hope that everybody kind of appreciates this opportunity to kind of have mutual thanks for, for uh, this opportunity. It was really huge for me, both of my scholarships are situations and beyond just the financial help, which is a minor miracle, the, the both of confidence in the, you know, someone feels like I can succeed is huge when you're not a traditional student. Well, we're both educators and we feel that our education has been a powerful positive force in our life. And um, I, at least, it, you know, was helped greatly by scholarships going through school. So this seemed perfectly natural and, and just the right thing to do. It's important for me because it helps me out a lot in the long term. Like this scholarship here helped pay for a lot of my books, um, online sources, and other things I needed for the coursework this year. So I just finished a career in IT, 40 years in IT, uh, retired two years ago from Microsoft. I wanted to um, be able to leave a legacy 
at a university that was away from large urban centers because I'm very, from a very small country uh, community of uh, 750 people. What does it mean to you to be able to meet your scholarship recipient face to face? It's, it's very important. Uh, it, it gives you a good feeling, that, the sense that you're helping somebody get direct contact. Well, probably whether he's interested or not, I'm going to give him some career advice and uh, maybe stay, save him a step or two. We hope that donors realize that, one, they've made some good decisions by setting up a scholarship, by supporting particular students uh, uh, through the uh, challenging selection processes to align these students for scholarships. Uh, but just as importantly, to sort of enhance that relationship or that sense of engagement with the university, and quite frankly, so that they may consider investing even more in these in these students as well as students of the future. Institution scholarships is just one form. Fill it out to the best of your abilities and submit it. You never know what you will get. Like for my my for my position, I didn't really know what I was going to get, and I ended up getting a scholarship. So I just say, everyone, do it, and you never know what happens. My biggest thing is just thank you. It's it's huge um, that they're doing this, that they believe in this. I think we just want to say work hard and the kind of success is just around the corner. Again, an in-house video, really nice wrap up of what that event was like. Something you could send out to media if you wanted to cover, but also a really great way to um, thank your donors for coming and doing a nice wrap up. And then um, finally, you know, Berkeley um, is a school of music and they have a city scholarship concert. And I thought that this was a cute invite that they had done um, featuring the music. I'll you, the city music program is, is for kids to get a chance to even dream about going to Berkeley and continue this music education until you. There's an energy here that makes you want to be greater. Again, I mean, I think that performances, um, follow-ups with special, you know, exclusive content um, can always do really well, but this is a great event promotion because um, the uh, beneficiaries are musicals and, and have talents to um, share and that's probably speaking to the very reason why a lot of people are choosing to support this program, which um, allows uh, students from around the country the opportunity to go to Berkeley um, with a scholarship in hand, otherwise probably would not be able to attend. And they do a concert um, to not just raise funds, but also awareness about that program. And they even have a celebrity host, which isn't a bad thing to feature either. So all the more reason to celebrate that. So before we go into our q and I just want to remind you that we still have our thank you refer referral program going strong. As you can see here, Chris is telling Anna all about thank you and how much he loves using it. And so she goes to thankyou.com slash demo, enters in Chris's name in the box that asks for who referred you to thank you. And then when she signs up to thank you within three months of her demo, Chris gets a $200 gift card to Amazon. And so the long story short here is you could be Chris in this situation. So let us know um, if you have anybody in mind that you think would um, benefit from thank you. And we'd be happy to arrange a $200 Amazon gift card once they sign on with us. Another plug for our Thank You Partner Community on Facebook, just go into think, uh, Facebook and type Thank You Partner Community in the search bar, and then ask to join the Partner Community group and someone like myself or others at Thank You will gladly approve you and you can start to benefit from that perk of membership. So with that, I wanted to open it up to questions. Um, we do have a Q&A right here. Feel free to, um, 
use the chat feature also. Open that. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to take them now. And for those of you wondering, um, we, um, I am always available at lindsay.roth at thankyou.com. Um, we will be having another edition of this coming up later this month for people who couldn't make it today. Um, and then uh, we'll have some new programming um, being advertised in your inbox um, next week. So keep an eye out for that. And you can sign up for um, webinars through the end of the summer. All right, well, it's looking like we don't have any more questions that are coming in. So if anything comes up, you can always feel free to reach me at lindsay.roth at thankfew.com. Ping me on Facebook in the partner community. I'm always happy to have a conversation, a brainstorming session, talk about a unique issue that maybe you're trying to work through at your institution. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, I just wish you all a really happy and successful um, commencement season because I know that's upon all of us. And if you're anything like me, it's getting a little bit down to the wire and I'm very excited to see our newest alumni off. So best of luck. I hope, I wish you all um, an easy uh, transition of students to alumni and good weather for the main event. Have a nice one, thanks so much.